Hi again. Let's study the UptParse library. It's a framework for parsing the command line and giving the same consistent error type handling through your shop, your whole company. It's an interesting framework in that for this, you're going to instantiate a class. It is also interesting because we have an example here of when not having encapsulation is a good idea. I mark it optional because if you don't need this for your work, you don't need it for the class, but it is an interesting example. We start by looking at the output. protectpdf.com py you give it the name of a pdf file and maybe some options and the result is a password protected pdf file when we call it without giving a pdf file to protect you get this usage statement and an error a pdf file name is needed if you do double dash help you get all the options including the double dash help there's single dash and double dash for each of these. And like the dash O, after that, you give the output PDF file optionally. Here I am doing it with a syllabus.pdf to protect, and it's still not happy. I have to tell it what the password should be. Here I'm going to give the password with a dash P, and I'm doing verbose. And so it tells me what it is calling, that it's done, a bunch of blah, blah. Here I'm doing it without verbose, and there's no output. I'm doing it on a non-existent PDF and verbose. Lots of stuff. And then we're doing it where we name the output file and give the password. Very quiet. And we see that in the end, we have that output file. We have this one is the default if you don't give an output file. And that is left alone. OK, let's look at the code. We'll start here on line 64 by looking at our main, where we see three lines of code. The first one is we're going to set up parsing. And then we're going to collect command that's going to pass us back an options object. And then we're going to push that into our function protect PDF. Set up parsing looks like this. Here we are instantiating an option parser class, which is in the opParse library. The string I give it becomes a usage statement. You can put percent prog so that the program name itself is displayed here. And then you add options. Here's my dash O, double dash, output file name. You give a destination. This is going to be the name of the attribute in the options object. It's going to be output PDF file, and it will be set to whatever you give it. If you give it nothing, then we'll see a none at that attribute. And we see that it is optional, so having a none is fine. We're going to add the option dash p or double dash password and we will put it in the attribute password and then this is the help statement for it we have the dash v for verbose or double dash v that will go into the verbose attribute and if we get that dash v the verbose attribute will be set to true from this otherwise it is not and the default is that it will be set to false and the help statement. That parser, which knows about all the options, is returned to main and passed into collect command. Here's the collect command. I ask that parser to parse arcs. That is inside the parser object. So something comes back. What comes back is a tuple. Options and arcs. Options is itself an object, and it is an object of some class that does not enforce encapsulation. The args is, again, another tuple. 
And it is a tuple of the words that were on the command line that didn't fit in the option parsing. So that does not make an error to have extra words that come in here. And in fact, if it, I don't have args, or if I have more than one arg, then I give an error. It's important to say parser.errors so that that error comes out in the same scheme. That one argument that we expect will be the name of the file that we're going to protect. And I am sticking it on the fly, breaking all encapsulation rules, right there in my options object. I can add whatever I want. If the options do not have a password, then I'm going to make an error. Otherwise, my options are all good, and I'll return them to my main. And I'll push them into my protect PDF. Looking at protect PDF puts us to the top. And we see here we have imported our opt parse module. But I also did the subprocess. Now we've already learned about subprocess, but adding a password uses subprocess down here on line 39 to open a pipe to PDFTK, standing for PDF Toolkit, which is free and wonderful if you find that utility. OK, here comes my options. And if I don't have an output PDF file, then I am going to make the default file. To do that, I do the R split on the input file name just one time on the dot. So I just pulled off the dot PDF. And that's what's in front and back. Now my output file will be that front underscore secured and then the back back on it. So that's my default output PDF file. Here is my command sequence for my pipe. If you want to learn about that, you do a help on PDF toolkit. Okay, I join that up so that I can make a nice printout so I can see what I'm doing if we have verbose. Now here's my process and you can see that I am collecting standard error. There ought not be any standard out. Now I have to see if there is anything on standard error. I am setting a flag. If there is at least a line that comes from my standard error, then I'll say some output is true. And I'm going to make the line of that output by making a string of it, because it comes to me in bytes, encoding in ASCII. And I'm going to print it, because it was the error. If there isn't any output, from standard error, and if we are in verbose mode, then I say done and print some output. OK, that's what happened. You're on for an exercise. I'll see you when you're ready to move on.